Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to explain to you what convolution is and why it is used in electrical engineering. Uh, when I first learned convolution, I could not quite understand why it has to be used in analyzing a system. And I had a hard time because of it, and I do not want you guys to go through the same thing. Uh, most of the systems that we study in college level are LTA systems, which stands for Linear Time Invariant System. Uh, and this is the condition for convolution to actually work. Uh, consider a system that looks like this. You have xt applied at this point, this is input, and you have yt output from this point. Now, uh, if your signal xt looks something like this, what do you have to do in order to figure out the value of yt? Well, the answer is simple. If you are trying to figure out the value of yt at t1, you only have to look at the value of t, a value of xt at t1, right? You did not have to look at the past inputs or the future inputs because they do not have any influences on the current output, right? But is this the case for every circuit? No. Because most circuits that we study have capacitors or inductors, right? And these components, they store energy and discharges energy even after there is no signal anymore, okay? So we have to take these factors into account. So what I mean by this is when you're trying to figure out the value of yt at t1, not only do you have to consider the value of xt at t1, but you also have to consider the influences of the past inputs because they leave certain amount of energy and you have to sum them up, right? So this is what convolution does. And uh, before I go further into convolution, I have to explain to you what impulse response means. So in order to co uh, correctly uh, describe the behavior of the system, we need to Give, we need to come up with a signal that does not have any past inputs or future inputs. And the only signal that we can think of is an impulse signal, which has a value of t1, a, t, a, a value of 1 at t0, and value of 0 at, at all other points. Now, if you apply this signal to a system, then you would get an impulse response, yt. And this yt would be free from any influences of past inputs because there's no past input, right? And this, H, this yt is often written as ht, which stands for uh, impulse response. Uh, so what convolution is, is its weighted sum of past inputs. It, it calculates those influences for you, okay? So the way it does this is, uh, okay, let me go to the process of finding yt again. So in order to find out the value of yt at t1, you need two things. The first thing is of course the input, and the second thing is the impulse response. Now impulse response is often a decaying response. A decaying signal because uh, once there's no uh, energy input to a system, there uh, the signal slowly decays, and it, this is a natural thing. Uh, say your xt looks something like this. Okay. Uh, if you are trying to figure out the value of t1, first you need to look at the value of t1, uh, xt at t1 at this point, and you apply this t1 with this value right here. Because the moment you apply this value, then you will get this value, right? What about this point right here? How would you calculate the, uh, the um, influences, influence of this, this xt? Well, if, you, if this 
say this uh, time apart between t1 and t0 was one second, then you would look at, say this point, and say this is one second. You will look at this point and then multiply this point with this point, right? And you have, and you would add this value to the current output, right? And you have to do the all these processes uh, with all these values, right? And when you add these values up, you will get the correct value of yt. Now this is what this formula does for you, okay? Uh, you have to add all these fractions, the multiplications, and all, you have to add all these fractions together, right? This is what integral does for you. Let me explain to you this more graphically. So if you look at this uh, uh, equation, you first flip gx respect to fx. Now often this tau is t, which stands for time, of course. So, and, and G, this gx is often hx, the, the impulse response. So the way you did this is you slide this signal to the input signal. And of course, at some point, these two signals would overlap, and this is the value of the convolution. Now, if you zoom in at this point, when the signals overlap, you can get a more intuitive understanding. Now this is this is fx, the input signal, and this is at this point. This is the impulse response. Now, if you look at, say, uh, the value of t1, now you multiply this input signal, the blue line, with the green line, the impulse response, right? And you and this, and you apply, multiply the past signals and their, and, and their influences, and you add these up. And this becomes the area. And this is how we calculate uh, the output yt correctly. So this way, we have considered the influences of the past inputs, okay? And we have added them up in an appropriate manner. And this is what convolution does for you.